Free energy and Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower. Among Nikola Tesla's most ambitious yet ultimately doomed endeavors was the Wardenclyffe Tower, an invention that Tesla believed could tap into the planet's natural electrical charges and combined with the energy from the ionosphere, provide an almost unlimited supply of free energy. In the late 19th century, Tesla was grappling with financial instability. To regain his lost prestige, he envisioned a tower capable of sending and receiving wireless transmissions and broadcasting electricity. Tesla's grandiose plans, however, faced stiff competition. His rival, Guglielmo Marconi, was making strides with his radio-based telegraph system. To outdo Marconi, Tesla designed Wardenclyffe to be the world's first wireless power transmitter. Construction began in 1901 near Shoreham, Long Island. The tower, which was 187 feet tall and had an extensive network of underground metal roots reaching 300 feet into the earth, was crafted from conductive materials. The tower's design featured a massive dome weighing 55 tons. Tesla's vision was not merely confined to wireless communication. He believed that by using the earth itself to conduct electrical signals, he could transmit energy across the globe. He theorized that if he injected electric current into the earth at the right frequency, it would resonate and create standing waves that could be tapped anywhere on the planet. Impressed, yet cautious, financier J.P. Morgan initially backed Tesla with $150,000. However, as Tesla expanded his plans, seeking to build a more powerful transmitter capable of surpassing Marconi's, the financial demands escalated. Tesla's request for additional funds met with Morgan's refusal, leaving Tesla in a precarious position. Despite the financial strain, Tesla pressed on. He purchased 200 acres of land in Shoreham and envisioned Wardenclyffe as a hub for a global wireless system, complete with a radio city that would produce his patented devices. Tesla kept the public and press at bay as he continued his work in secrecy. By 1902, the tower had reached its full height, but progress stalled without the necessary funding. Tesla's letters to Morgan, pleading for more money, went unanswered. In 1903, newspapers reported bright flashes from the tower, but no explanation was given, and Wardenclyffe fell silent thereafter. Financial woes compounded as investor confidence waned. By 1905, Tesla's alternating current patents expired, cutting off a significant source of income. Attempts to commercialize his other inventions failed, and by 1906, Wardenclyffe was abandoned. By 1915, Tesla's mounting debts, including a $20,000 tab at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, where he had secluded himself, led to the foreclosure of the Wardenclyffe property. The dream officially ended in 1917, when the tower was demolished for scrap to satisfy Tesla's debts. After the demolition in 1917, a swirl of conspiracies emerged, painting a picture of innovation thwarted by powerful interests. Prominent among these was the belief that Tesla's vision of wireless free energy posed a dire threat to established energy industries and influential financiers like J.P. Morgan, who allegedly withdrew support to protect their investments in traditional power. Speculations of government sabotage were also rife, suggesting that the tower and Tesla's technologies were seen as potential national security risks. This led to deliberate technical and financial barriers and the confiscation of his research after his death. These theories cast Tesla as a visionary, stymied by a concerted effort to maintain economic and industrial control, his groundbreaking work buried to preserve the status quo. The Water Fuel Cell Stanley Meyer was a prolific inventor with patents in various fields, ranging from banking to heart monitoring. However, in 1975, amid the lingering effects of the Middle East oil embargo that crippled the U.S. economy and slashed car sales, Meyer turned his attention to the automotive world. He believed that water propulsion was the key to ending oil dependency. Meyer developed a fuel cell based on the principle of splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen, burning the hydrogen to create energy, and releasing oxygen and water residues through the exhaust, resulting in harmless emissions. Meyer claimed his water-powered engine mounted on a conspicuous dune buggy with a water-powered car emblazoned on its side, could travel 180 kilometers on just four liters of water. This assertion, though extraordinary, attracted significant attention and skepticism. Videos and photographs of the car, surrounded by curious onlookers, suggested a breakthrough, but no independent verification of the engine's performance or the validity of the patent emerged. In 1996, 
Meyer's bold claims faced scrutiny in an Ohio court. Investors who had financed the project became suspicious and petitioned the court to investigate. The judge appointed government investigators, but Meyer refused to submit his car for examination. The investigators concluded that Meyer's technology was neither revolutionary nor feasible, labeling it trivial. The court found Meyer guilty of gross and egregious fraud and ordered him to repay $25,000 to the defrauded investors. This was a devastating blow for Meyer, whose reputation hinged on his inventive prowess. Meyer's troubles didn't end in the courtroom. He reported receiving threats from oil company representatives and claimed to have been offered substantial sums to suppress his technology. Meyer's paranoia grew, and he consistently refused to allow independent tests of his invention, even under assurances that the critical components would not be tampered with. In 1998, Meyer's paranoia seemingly came to fruition. While dining with Belgian investors, he suddenly fell ill, clutching his throat, running outside, and shouting, they poisoned me. He died shortly after, with the official cause attributed to a brain aneurysm due to a high blood pressure. However, Meyer's supporters, convinced of foul play, suspected assassination aimed at silencing his revolutionary work. An autopsy reported no trace of poison, but theories persisted, particularly among those who believed his invention threatened powerful interests in the oil industry. Following Meyer's death, his inventions and the iconic dune buggy became subjects of further mystery. Stephen Meyer, Stanley's brother, reported that the dune buggy and Meyer's instruments were stolen from his garage a week after Stanley's death, only to be later recovered under unclear circumstances. Whether Meyer was a visionary silenced by vested interests or a charlatan who fell victim to his fabrications, his story continues to capture the imagination of those who yearn for a breakthrough in the energy sector. Cold Fusion Cold Fusion proposes that nuclear reactions can occur at temperatures close to room temperature. Should it work, the implications for cheap energy generation would be revolutionary. In the 1980s, scientist and author Eugene Malov became captivated by cold fusion, convinced of its viability and transformative potential. In 1989, he published a book chronicling the work of two scientists, Stanley Pons and Martin Fleischmann at the University of Utah. According to Malov, Pons and Fleischmann had achieved a greater than unity energy output from a cold fusion experiment. They had supposedly used a tabletop setup with heavy water and an electrode, employing electrolysis, the process of applying direct current to provoke a chemical reaction. This experiment generated excess heat that mainstream science couldn't explain. Malov's book also detailed what he saw as a systematic suppression campaign by mainstream physicists. He, along with Pons and Fleischmann, claimed that repeatable results were met with ridicule to protect the interests and funding of established scientific fields. They believed a concerted effort was underway to bury the potential of cold fusion. Tragically, in 2004, Malov's life was cut short. While clearing out his childhood home, he was killed under suspicious circumstances. The authorities arrested three individuals in connection with his death, suggesting robbery as the motive. However, some supporters of Malov's work speculate that it was an assassination, a dark consequence of his controversial work. The investigation into Malov's death saw many twists over the course of a decade, providing no definitive resolution and further fueling speculation. Ultimately, Several individuals were convicted of killing Milov over an eviction dispute. Today, cold fusion continues to exist on the edges of scientific inquiry. While mainstream acceptance remains elusive, a dedicated cohort of researchers persists, inspired by the possibility that cold fusion could one day revolutionize energy generation. The Cloudbuster In the early 20th century, Wilhelm Reich emerged as a controversial figure whose peculiar inventions and radical theories captured both fascination and outrage. Reich's ideas, particularly his notion of orgone energy, led to a dramatic confrontation with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, resulting in the censorship and destruction of his work. Reich coined the term orgone from the word organism, positing it as a life force and creative energy inherent in healthy individuals. Reich's most notorious orgone-related invention was the Cloudbuster, a device he claimed could manipulate clouds and induce rainfall. The Cloudbuster consisted of a conductive rod implanted in a body of water, connected to an array of tubes aimed at the sky. Reich believed this apparatus harnessed the natural orgone in the Earth, drawing energy downward and compelling clouds to release rain. Despite the scientific community's skepticism, 
There are several documented instances of the device's successful, though perhaps coincidental, usage, most notably in ending a drought plaguing blueberry farmers in Maine. Another of Reich's contentious creations was the Orgone Accumulator, a cupboard-like enclosure lined with specialized materials. Drawing inspiration from the Faraday cage, the accumulator was designed to concentrate Orgone energy, allowing individuals to sit inside and absorb its purported benefits. Reich claimed this device could cure cancer and a host of other serious ailments by exposing users to high levels of Orgone. Reich's theories, however, were widely regarded as pseudoscientific. His work and the community of followers he cultivated were dismissed as, quote, a cult of sex and anarchy. Among his earliest and fiercest critics was the FDA, which accused Reich of fraud through his Orgone treatments. The agency sought to halt the sale of Orgone accumulators, leading to a legal battle in which Reich refused to appear in court. Consequently, the judge ordered the destruction of all accumulators, components, and related documents. Undeterred, Reich continued to develop his Orgone treatments. His persistence led to his eventual imprisonment, when an associate was found in possession of an accumulator. Reich died in his jail cell. Today, Reich's work remains largely discredited by science. Few of his inventions have survived, but a single cloudbuster endures, preserved in a museum in Maine. The Perpetual Motion Holder Coral Castle, located in Homestead, Florida, is an architectural marvel comprising over a thousand tons of intricately quarried and shaped limestone. The site features an array of rooms, furniture, and sculptures, all crafted from the same coral rock. What elevates this feat from impressive to extraordinary is that it was the work of a single man, Edward Leedskalnen. Standing just five feet tall and weighing a mere 129 pounds, Leedskalnen, who was also chronically ill, managed to construct this megalithic wonder entirely on his own, supposedly using a mysterious invention that he refused to share with the world. Leedskalnen's journey began in Latvia, where he was born on January 12, 1887, to a family of farmers. Amidst the political unrest of early 20th century Europe, he emigrated to the United States in 1912, eventually settling in Florida. There, despite his frail health, he embarked on the monumental task of building Coral Castle. Leedskalnin's construction methods have baffled experts. He claimed to have used a device he dubbed a perpetual motion holder, which he suggested could manipulate specific pockets of gravity through magnetism. Eyewitness accounts, including those from local teenagers, described him moving massive blocks as if they floated. Leedskalnin's fascination with magnets began early, allegedly linked to his recovery from tuberculosis through magnet therapy, a detail as murky as many aspects of his life. His work on Coral Castle spanned 28 years, during which he quarried, transported, and positioned stones with a precision that defies conventional explanation. Some rationalists propose that he secretly worked at night, using a wooden tripod or other tools. Yet even modern attempts to replicate his techniques using advanced machinery have struggled to match his results. After relocating Coral Castle 2.5 miles from Florida City to Homestead, Leedskalnin continued to refine and expand the site, adding fortress-like walls, a towering obelisk, and celestial sculptures. He opened the site to the public, offering tours for a modest fee and teasing visitors with cryptic hints about his construction methods. Edward Leedskalnin passed away in 1951, taking his secrets and inventions with him. If revealed to be true, which of these inventions would have the greatest power to change the world? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.